Video games are supposed to bring enjoyment to people, right? Wrong! Uh, video games piss people off, and sometimes they piss the entire world off. Welcome to Chaos Gaming. Let's get into this. You're gonna get mad, but it's okay, because this is how we cope. Street Fighter X Tekken, that's right. Now, I've been talking about this game quite a bit recently, and every time I say it, I say it has a lot of potential. It could have been one of the best games, but unfortunately, in the fighting genre, it dropped the ball in almost every way possible. Now, aside from being kind of a crappy game, honestly, Street Fighter X Tekken got on the gaming world's radar. It was a bad way, though. It was discovered that almost all the DLC was actually on the game disc on day one. Yep, simply locked behind a juicy paywall. Things only got worse when hackers revealed that certain Sony exclusive content was actually on the Xbox game disc as well. But once again, simply locked away and unusable. This kickstarted a massive conversation about how shady it was for game companies to hide lock content on a game disc that you paid for and then charge you a second time. I mean, we bought the disc. Why are we not entitled to everything on the disc? At number nine, FIFA 21 Legacy Edition. Now, FIFA gets crap every single year for doing so little and charging so much. FIFA 21 launched in October of this year. PC, Xbox One, PS4, everybody got it, but then there was another version called the Legacy Edition for the Switch. Now with a subtitle like Legacy Edition, you would expect a lot of extra features, right? No, wrong. Aside from the fact that FIFA 21 was a complete copy-paste of FIFA 20, the Legacy Edition featured less game modes, less content than the Xbox and the PlayStation versions, all while charging the same price tag. Then, cherry on top. EA removed FIFA 20 from the Switch store, forcing gamers to either pay full price for the new one or not play FIFA on Switch at all. As with recording this video, FIFA 21 Legacy Edition has a pathetic 0.2 user score on Metacritic. Just, I mean, it's a wrap. It's crazy. It's, it's bad. Everyone, if you enjoy Chaos Gaming, uh, make sure you're following the page. Turn on those notifications, share it with a fellow gaming friend, and drop a like before you leave. Mass Effect 3, one of the most infamous game endings of all time. It launched eight years ago and it was the conclusion to one of the most critically acclaimed trilogies ever. Now, the game itself was solid, but the ending, you already know, it pissed everybody off. Throughout the Mass Effect series, you make countless choices, and those choices you make throughout all three games affect one another. That is awesome. Bioware promised the ending of Mass Effect 3 would be extremely deep and personal to the player's choices throughout the entire trilogy, but guess what? That was not true. There was only a handful of possible endings for the game, and all of them were super similar to one another. Plus, they had nothing to do with the player choices throughout the franchise. Now, it's unclear as to why Bioware so dramatically missed the mark on this ending, and it was a huge letdown, and many still call it the worst video game ending of all time, but now, now we've got a Mass Effect teaser. It's going to continue on. Next up is NBA 2K20 and 2K21. Yep, we have a double entry here. Now, the 2K series has been going on for over a decade, and for the most part, they're pretty solid basketball games, but... 2K20 and 21 have gotten in serious hot water for the same reasons. First, 2K20 got onto the, well, it got into the craps with gamers after 2K Games decided to add unskippable advertisements in your game. Yep, simulating real world commercial breaks in a basketball game, but also forcing you to sit through literal ads in a game you paid $60 for. Gamers were pissed, and rightfully so. 2K promised they would do better, but a year later, guess what happened? Unskippable ads returned in NBA 2K21 in October of this year, which prompted the same well-deserved outrage from gamers. Now, this time around, 2K acted quicker. They removed the ads within mere days of adding them, but the damage was done. Why would you do that when you knew it pissed everybody off to start with? Did you think it was just going to slide on through this time? A lot of sports games on today's video. EA Sports UFC 4, released in August of this year. It was the latest entry in the longest running series for EA Sports and a shocker, it found itself in the internet's crosshairs once again. It's an EA title. A few weeks after release, EA thought it would be a great idea to add, you guessed it, full screen advertisements from third party companies like Amazon. Fans were pissed. They were required to watch ads in a video game they already paid full price for and following the backlash, EA disabled them within a few days while issuing a flimsy apology. They said they used the money from the ads to pay for the game itself, when that is obviously not true. They disabled them after people complained. The moral of the story? In-game ads suck, and sports games need to stop incorporating them. At number five today, The Last of Us Part Two. Now, without stirring the crap storm too much, it was an extremely controversial game, as we all know, the first Last of Us was one of the most beloved games of its time. It told a great story with excellent presentation. 
People waited patiently seven years for the continuation, and when we finally got it, it was, for a lack of better terms, divisive. The visuals and gameplay of Last of Us 2 are top-notch, but the storytelling characterization and the themes, they rubbed a lot of gamers the wrong way. Many felt the returning characters were treated disrespectfully and the themes didn't make any sense in context of that universe. Now, it also didn't help. The Naughty Dog was caught sending false DMA or DMCA takedowns to YouTubers discussing leaks and story elements. Now, I don't care how you feel about the game. False takedowns are never okay. The Last of Us 2 was a hot topic in the gaming world this year, and I'm sure I'm going to probably start a pretty big crap storm in the comments just by mentioning this in this video. Since it's a video about pissing off, hatred. <laughs> it was an awful isometric shooter from 2005, and it did its absolute best to piss every gamer off. It succeeded, but probably not in the ways it wanted to. The game followed a, well, I'm not even going to go into it because I don't want to get demonetized. I mean, you guys already know, violence on top of violence on top of violence, real world violence, all that. Then you have hatred and it throws fuel on the fire and tries to profit. Gamers hated hatred. Ha, <laughs> yeah, you get it? For its crap gameplay, terrible design, as well as the fact that it seemingly did everything it could to turn back the clock on video game violence in the debate. The game sucked. At number three. Cyberpunk 2077, one of the most hotly anticipated games of the entire decade. It was announced all the way back in 2012. Massive RPG, it delayed time and time again, right? It's out. PC version got solid reviews, is still one of the most popular games on Steam. However, the one in the PS4, whew, not so lucky. In fact, they barely work. The 8th gen consoles just were not strong enough to handle this game. Now, things got so bad that Sony and Microsoft started issuing refunds and pulling the game from digital stores, which forced CD Projekt Red to issue an apology and promise fixes. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X versions of Cyberpunk are still in the works, but I'm willing to bet those are going to be pushed back even further while CD Projekt Red works on fixing the abysmal 8th gen generation's versions and getting them back on store shelves. At number two. Diablo Immortal, a game that hasn't even come out yet, and here it is at the number two spot. It's an upcoming online-only mobile game set between the events of Diablo 2 and 3. Now, I know that sounds lame, but uh, here, here, okay, here's why it pissed people off. Because the announcement of Diablo Immortal, it was announced at BlizzCon two years ago, and at a time when Blizzard was already in hot water with the community due to a series of bad updates and PR stunts. Fans were eager for Blizzard to get back to form. And what we got was a mobile game that just seemed to prove how insanely out of touch the company had become. Things only got worse for Blizzard in the next couple years. The company, it's kind of in, they're, they're in their own dark age right now, and it all kicked off with the announcement of Diablo Mortal Immortal on mobile. And at number one, no shocker, Battlefront 2 2017. You expected it. Man, it makes every negative video I ever do. Come on. <laughs> Blatant pay to win nature. Let's go. Game looks gorgeous. And EA was quick to tell us that there would be no season pass this time around, which sounded great on paper, but that trade off was a loot box system that gave instant gameplay advantages to people who ponied up money. Real money. Battlefront 2, it didn't just poke the hornet's nest, it smashed it with a hammer and the world hit back hard. EA stocks took a massive dive as governments around the world started using the game as an example as to why loot boxes and microtransactions should be regulated. Now, if there's a silver lining, it's the fact that it heavily discouraged loot boxes from future video games. And Battlefront 2 is largely the reason why RNG microtransactions are disappearing from AAA games. Hopefully, EA keeps this in mind with their next Star Wars game going forward. There you have it. Those are games that absolutely pissed off the entire world. Are you mad? Were you mad? Let me know which game made you the, the, the most angry, and I hope you guys have a good day.